What if everything you thought you knew about Malta's ancient history was only the surface? Beneath the postcard beauty of golden cliffs and sapphire seas lies a forgotten chapter, one so old it predates the temples, the farmers, even history itself. It's a story written not in ink, but in stone, in tooth, in shadow. A mystery buried deep in a cave the locals call Gar Dalam, the Cave of Darkness. My name is Elena, a Maltese archaeologist born in Valletta, and I'm here to take you on a journey into Malta's ancient past, a story that might rewrite history. Imagine standing on Malta's rugged cliffs 40,000 years ago, the Mediterranean stretching out before you, the sea lower than it is today. A stocky figure with a heavy brow gazes at the horizon, a Neanderthal, perhaps, our long-lost cousin. For decades, we believe Malta's history began with its famous megalithic temples and Neolithic farmers. But what if it's far older? What if Neanderthals, those misunderstood pioneers, walked this island? I've been obsessed with this question since I was a child. Visiting the Gar Dalam Cave, known as the Cave of Darkness, where a single fossilized tooth and a handful of crude tools hint at a forgotten chapter. This isn't just about bones or stones. It's about who we are, where we came from, and the resilience of a species we've underestimated for too long. Join me as we explore whether Neanderthals called Malta home, a mystery that's kept me up at night and will keep you hooked until the end. Let's dive into the shadows of Gardalam and uncover the truth together. Gar Dalam, a cave nestled near Birjabuga in southeast Malta, is more than a geological wonder. It's a portal to the Ice Age. In 1917, Yepe Despot, a curator at the Malta Natural History Museum, unearthed two human molar teeth buried deep in the cave's red earth, a discovery that sent ripples through the academic world. Sir Arthur Keith, a leading British anatomist, studied these teeth and proposed a startling idea. They resembled the dental remains of Neanderthals, a species thought to roam Europe's cold plains, not a sunlit Mediterranean island. This was a bold claim as Malta, 90 kilometers south of Sicily, seemed too isolated for such ancient visitors. Growing up in Malta, I visited Gar Dalam on school trips, marveling at fossilized hippo bones but dismissing the idea of early humans here. Yet the more I learned, the more Keith's hypothesis intrigued me. He wasn't prone to wild speculation. His meticulous comparisons of the teeth's thick enamel and robust roots to Neanderthal remains from France and Croatia carried weight. However, in 1917, the scientific world was still grappling with Darwin's theories, and early human taxonomy was a battleground. Keith's idea struggled against skepticism, as many argued Malta's geography made Neanderthal presence unlikely. I used to share that doubt, but now I wonder, were we too quick to dismiss the possibility? The Ice Age reshaped the Mediterranean, and Malta was no exception. Sea levels dropped by up to 120 meters, exposing land bridges and shrinking distances between islands. Geologists I've consulted suggest that, during glacial peaks, Malta may have been just 20 kilometers from Sicily, a challenging but not impossible crossing for a resilient species. Neanderthals, we now know, were far more capable than the stereotypes suggest. They fished along coasts, cooked with fire, and may have even ventured onto islands like Crete and Gibraltar. If they could adapt to such diverse environments, why not Malta? Keith's 1924 paper, presented to the Royal Anthropological Institute, emphasized the teeth's significance, urging scientists to collect every fact about Neanderthals. His work was a starting point, but it's only part of the story. To understand Gardalam's secrets, we need to explore the evidence. 
teeth, tools, and the world Neanderthals inhabited. My journey as an archaeologist has taught me that Malta's small size belies its potential to hold big answers, and the cave shadows are whispering clues we can't ignore. The two molar teeth from Gar Dalam, found in a deep layer alongside pygmy hippopotamus bones, are at the heart of this mystery. Sir Arthur Keith noted their worn surfaces, thick enamel, and sturdy roots, traits he linked to Neanderthal morphology. Recent studies by experts at the London Natural History Museum have revived this hypothesis, using digital imaging to identify a dental cusp, a unique feature, like a fingerprint, that strongly suggests Neanderthal origin. However, the evidence isn't airtight. The cave's upper layers, mixed with Neolithic pottery and later human remains, created confusion, and the loss of precise stratigraphic context during early excavations complicates things further. As an archaeologist, I've spent hours in labs examining teeth under microscopes, and I can tell you dental morphology is a detective's game. Neanderthal teeth are built for heavy chewing, their wear patterns reflecting tough diets of meat and plants. The Gardalum molar fits this profile, but skeptics argue it could belong to a robust modern human. I understand their caution, one tooth isn't a skeleton, and we need more to settle the debate. Beyond the teeth, stone tools found near the molars offer another clue. These crude flakes, scrapers, and cores resemble Mousterian artifacts, the kind Neanderthals crafted across Europe. In 2016, archaeologists re-examined these tools and noted striking similarities to finds from Sicily and southern Italy. Initially, some dismissed them as naturally broken rocks or geofacts, but I've held these artifacts, felt their sharp edges, and I'm convinced they were shaped by human hands. The tools suggest a presence tied to the Ice Age, possibly 30,000 years ago or more, predating Malta's known Neolithic settlements. What excites me is how these findings align with our evolving view of Neanderthals. They weren't just land-bound hunters. They adapted to coasts and forests, and evidence from Crete suggests they may have crossed water, perhaps on driftwood or primitive rafts. If they reached Sicily, as recent discoveries confirm, Malta is in a stretch. Still, the evidence is suggestive, not definitive. We need more fossils, better dating, or even DNA to close the case. For now, the teeth and tools are a tantalizing hypothesis, one that keeps me digging for answers and challenges everything I thought I knew about Malta's past. To make this mystery come alive, let's shift from fossils to people, those who've shaped this story and why it matters. Growing up in Malta, my grandmother would tell me tales of Gar Dalam, saying its shadows held secrets older than the island's temples. She sparked my love for archaeology, but two stories, one from the past, one from today, have deepened my connection to this quest. First, let's meet Jeppe Despot, the unsung hero of 1917. A curator at the Malta Natural History Museum, Jeppe worked in a time of war and scarcity, yet his passion for Malta's history drove him to dig in Gardalam's depths. When he found those two molar teeth, he knew they were special, carefully noting their position in the Red Cave Earth, a layer tied to the Ice Age. Jeppe sent the teeth to Sir Arthur Keith, waiting anxiously for answers as letters crossed a war-torn world. He wasn't chasing fame. He was driven by curiosity, a trait I admire as I follow in his footsteps. His meticulous records, though limited by the tools of his era, tied the teeth to a time before Malta's Neolithic farmers, giving us a foundation to build on. Jeppe's story reminds me that archaeology is about persistence, not perfection. And his discovery keeps the Neanderthal question alive a century later. Now let's fast forward to today and meet Carla, a Sicilian archaeologist I met last year while visiting Neanderthal sites near Palermo, just 90 kilometers from Malta. Over coffee, Carla showed me a stone scraper her team had unearthed, almost identical to those from Gardalam. Her excavations revealed fish bones and shellfish, proving Neanderthals were coastal dwellers who thrived on seafood. Carla's eyes lit up as she said, Elena, if Neanderthals were here, 
they could have seen Malta's cliffs on a clear day. That moment hit me hard. It made Malta's potential Neanderthal story feel real, not just a hypothesis. Carla's work isn't about headlines. It's about connecting dots across the Mediterranean, from Sicily's shores to Malta's caves. Her findings suggest Neanderthals were explorers capable of short sea crossings, and her scraper is a bridge to guard alarms tools. Both Yepe and Carla, separated by a century, share a passion for uncovering the past, and their stories ground this mystery in human curiosity. For me, they're proof that Gard Alam isn't just a cave, it's a link to our ancestors, maybe even Neanderthals, and a call to keep searching for the truth. For me, The Gard Alum mystery forces us to rethink Neanderthals and Malta's place in prehistory. For too long, we caricatured Neanderthals as brutish cavemen, but modern discoveries paint a different picture. They buried their dead with care, crafted jewelry from shells, and used fire to cook meals. In Gibraltar, they collected seashells. In France, they painted cave walls. These weren't simple-minded creatures. They were adaptable, curious, and perhaps adventurous. The Gardalam tooth and tools fit this emerging pattern, suggesting Neanderthals may have ventured to Mediterranean islands like Malta. My research convinces me that Malta's isolation during the Ice Age is overstated. With sea levels 120 meters lower, the island was closer to Sicily, perhaps reachable by wading through shallow waters or floating on logs. Neanderthals didn't need sophisticated boats, just the courage to explore. Their DNA, found in modern humans, shows they interbred with our ancestors, leaving a legacy in our genes. If they reached Crete or the Channel Islands, as some evidence suggests, Malta is well within their range. The tooth's features, thick enamel, a distinct cusp, aren't random. They're clues that align with Neanderthal morphology. The stone tools, resembling Mousterian artifacts, reinforce this possibility. Yet the debate persists. Some argue the tooth could be from a robust modern human, and the tools might be misstated or misinterpreted. I respect that skepticism. Science thrives on challenging assumptions. But I've studied enough Neanderthal remains to believe Malta's evidence is worth taking seriously. The island's prehistory may be far richer than we thought, stretching beyond the Neolithic to a time when Neanderthals stood on its shores. To move forward, we need more excavations, advanced techniques like CT scans, or even DNA analysis if we're lucky. Gardalam's story is unfinished, but it's already changed how I see Malta. It's not just a rocky outpost, it's a potential crossroads of early human exploration, where Neanderthals may have left footprints we're only beginning to uncover. So did Neanderthals roam Malta? The Gardalam tooth and tools are whispers from the past, not definitive proof, but they've captured my imagination and fueled a lifelong passion. This journey has taught me more than facts about fossils. It's shown me the power of curiosity. Jeppe Despot's careful digs, Carla's coastal discoveries, Sir Arthur Keith's bold hypothesis in my own quest, all stem from asking, what if? Neanderthals, whether they reached Malta or not, were more than survivors. Their worst... They were dreamers and explorers, pushing boundaries in a world we're still trying to understand. Their story reminds us that humans, no matter how ancient, always sought new horizons. The lesson here is simple but profound. Don't underestimate the past and don't underestimate yourself. The next breakthrough could come from a single tooth, a single question, or a single person determined to find answers. For me, Malta's cliffs will always echo with Neanderthal possibilities, and I'll keep listening, digging, and wondering. I hope you'll join me in chasing your own mysteries because the past still has secrets to share, and we're all part of its story.